Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and the next video in my weapon review series is Zack. And I am pretty excited to talk about Zack. There's a lot of good stuff, although you are going to see uh, that I'm not a big Zack user. Um, I just have to limit my resources or at least be efficient with them. And Zack was just never somebody really on the radar. However, we're going to get into the weapons, and uh, I, some of these are extremely uh, good weapons. The first one, um, just kind of briefly, I'll mention Iron Greatsword. It was a free weapon, and as free weapons go, it's one of the few that actually just gives two different kind of attacky type stats. It's got 27 points to attack, and then also crit potency. And in kind of niche situations, this is not a bad sub weapon. The next one is Crystal Sword Z. This was the only weapon that I've ever taken to OB10 for Zack that's not a free weapon. And the reason being is because the boost fire potency R ability on this weapon is insane. Now, there are a couple of other weapons in the game that do have a stat as high as 52 for an elemental R ability, but not very many. And 52, you, as you recall, most weapons that are going to give you an R ability that's elemental based is going to be about 39. So 52 is seriously high. And for a sub weapon for fire, this, I don't really know that there's anything that I think is better. Uh, next, we have Beach Parasol. This is a weapon that just has a lot of nostalgia for me because it was a free weapon very early in the game, like the very first event that we got, the Tonberry Summer event. Uh, I used this in a lot of content. As I've stated, or I, I don't know what order I'm releasing them in, but uh, in other videos, you'll see me say, you know, magic defense, it was very crucial in the early part of the game, and so was HP. I mean, HP and magic defense still are, but they were very important. Survivability was a big thing. And getting weapons uh, for free where you could OB-10 them was a big deal. So this weapon was put on a sub-weapon for, like, the first six months that I played the game, I would say almost every single time. Boost HP and magic defense really ensured that survivability and was quite clutch uh, in many situations. The next weapon I want to talk about is Arc Sword, and this is kind of a theme for Zack. A lot of his weapons, what makes them useful or him useful as a character, is his ability to kind of get an attack off and also do a debuff. Typically an offensive type debuff that's going to allow your team to do more damage to the enemy. So. This one here with Homing Blast, it does, you know, at OB10, 510% magical non-elemental damage, which is nothing that we're really too concerned about. But magic defense decrease potency high, definitely something that is useful on Zack, especially because it's a theme with his weapons. So very easy to combine two different types of debuff with him. Uh, and so <clears throat> this weapon is, gets a, you know, a, a nod for that reason. Kind of the counterpart to this is Cutlass. And what it does is very similar in damage here, but this one is physical defense decrease, potency high. And where the other one has magic attack, this one actually has physical defense. Uh, so our ability is pretty good and I think quite useful in the right situation uh, for a sub weapon. Uh, and those two weapons are noteworthy for that reason. Moving along, uh, the next one I want to point out is Enhanced Sword Z. And not because it's particularly great at anything, but just because I want to point out some of the wacky things that, that went in, I guess, to some of these weapons when they were developed. And this one here you can see, okay, so it's a single target heal that's got great healing potency. Uh, it's also got heal as an R ability. Then it's got ability potency and quite a lot of it, 52 to boost ability potency. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it's terrible. It's, it's a little bit odd though for a healing weapon. And then when we go to support material, they're like, you know what this needs? A lightning boost <laughs> I just it's so odd to me to see stuff like this I'm not saying that there's not times when you can work it into a build uh, but it's just a little bit weird to see something like that um, pressure Ridge is the next one I want to talk about um, this one is kind of similar to the newer earth weapon we saw for Sephiroth where it's got the, the elemental damage and it's got a breach on it so doing kind of double duty and that's always really good because as we've seen with Lucia a lot of times especially early in the game 
Whenever you got a breach, you did not also get the elemental damage in the C ability. So that was a big deal. 620% physical ice damage, as well as a high potency ice breach, as long as your HP was 50% or more. That is very strong. It makes him very good for ice teams. And something else that he's kind of noteworthy for is if you look at these R abilities, you know, the 39, that's very standard, but 62 physical attack is quite high. And Zach often gets a physical attack boost or when it is there for his R abilities is often higher than what we would see for other characters. And I think that that's noteworthy. Uh, it does have a sigil boost here. And so I think this weapon is a great weapon, especially if you're looking to shore up some ice stuff. Coming down to Black Whiskers, this was an absolute banger of a weapon when it came out. I remember it uh, like it was almost like yesterday because it was the Halloween banner and this weapon just really helped you crush water stuff because, okay, it's doing two things. One, physical defense decrease, potency mid, and by the way, even at five star, it's still potency mid on that, which is pretty damn good. Uh, but then a water breach as well. Now that only goes up to a max of mid, but it can stack to high. But basically you're looking at one hit, especially once you get it to OB6, you're doing two tiers down on the physical defense, two tiers down on the water resist. So then you take somebody like Cloud with Maritime Sword and you just start banging away and your damage is increased by a lot. Now, as I said earlier, another theme for Zack is the high physical attack R ability, making this weapon really, really good. And I honestly believe that it is still very, very useful to this day. Um, on top of that, it's got the Sigil boost, which is always great. And it's even got the water boost for the Materia here. And I, I think that that makes this weapon just insanely valuable. And it's, it's almost hard to believe that it's been out for as long as it has. Um, next one here, we're going to look at Twinkling Star. This is another one of those weapons that it just came out and did so many things uh, that you were like, really? He gets all of this? Uh, magic attack decrease, potency mid, and then also if your HP is 50% or more, physical defense decrease, which is always, they're always trying to get the physical defense decreases in uh, on Zack. And so, you know, it's kind of doing two things, right? Enabling you to do more damage while also uh, helping you survive with the magic attack decrease. Uh, our abilities here, I think, are pretty great for this weapon. Uh, boost HP and physical ability potency. Obviously, with Zack, there's a lot of physical uh, theme going on. Uh, it has a cure-all, which is interesting because, I mean, I remember critiquing this weapon when it came out and thinking, like, it's odd to have boost physical ability potency, on something that's so utility based. And then also, you know, with the cure all, definitely setting him up to be able to be your support. But, uh, you know, in retrospect, the physical ability potency, although it may not be super useful uh, when you're using him, if you're gonna be like healing and everything else, uh, it, it still makes this weapon a great sub weapon. And so Twinkling Star definitely gets a, uh, a nod. Ceremony. Ceremonial Sword Z is another one. Uh, this weapon is insane as well. So the only weapon I think, well, there's a few weapons you could compare it to, but I think it's most easily compared to Cloud Spiked Bat from the Guild we uh, Guild Shop. Because if you remember, Clouds does a max of 1600% physical non-elemental damage, which is the most of any weapon in the game. And it costs the same ATB, however, for only 200% off of that C ability, this one includes a high potency physical attack increase with the attack. Uh, and I would I would be fairly, fairly confident to say that after your first hit, when you have that high potency physical attack buff, uh, you're probably gonna be doing more damage than you would with something like the Spike Bat. Uh, additionally, this also will fill your gauges, whereas the Spike Bat won't. So. I don't think there's uh, any question as why this weapon is, is useful or good. Um, boost physical attack on the lower side for his weapons, but I mean, it, it does so much that obviously they didn't need to overpower this R ability. Um, support materia, again, we see the uh, sigil break there. So 
you know, if you're running Zach as either like a hybrid or main DPS, he's got, I mean, he does have the tools to get this done. Uh, last year, I'm going to go over Stream Guard. Obviously, this was good because it gives him the fire damage. So until this came out, all he had was this and magic fire damage to all enemies, 528, you know, not saying it's never useful, but it's just not what you were wanting for somebody that can have that kind of our ability for the fire potency. However, uh, this one, this one hits 850% plus the times 1.2. Uh, that is very, very big and ultimately makes him a great fire user. This, this, uh, our ability here obviously is always insane and you try to get that in everywhere you can. That's why I have it at 120, even at OB1, because it makes a fantastic sub weapon, especially, uh, for like your secondary damage dealer or support. Now, before I end this one, there are two weapons that I do not possess and they are <laughs> extremely noteworthy. Uh, one of them is Zenogre Blade. I believe that was a Monster Hunter collab weapon for him. And at OB10, uh, it does 940% physical lightning damage to a single enemy. And if your HP is above 70%, it does an extra 1.2 times damage, which if you do the math, comes out to 1128% lightning damage. I don't think anybody has to say anything to know that that makes him like the the hardest hitting lightning unit uh, in the game. Now, I off the top of my head, I don't know that he has a an lightning Arcanum, but gosh, if he got a mastery or an Arcanum, um, that is just really really insane the damage that he could put out. Uh, the other weapon that I don't have that just came out and it is like a best in slot type of weapon is Beatrix Sword, and that was featured I think on just the very last banner. Uh, as kind of like the add-in weapon uh, on the Final Fantasy IX Reawaken. And what it does at OB10, 940% physical wind damage. And again, if there's a debuff granted to the target, it's 1.2 times more damage, which gives you that same 1128%. Uh, that is insane, <laughs> right? Uh, even if you don't have an Arcanum or a Mastery for him, 1128% damage is just insane. Uh, comparing that to somebody like Dark Heavens, I think that does like 800%. Um, even with your mastery, you're still not going to get to 1128%. In fact, giving a 30% boost to an 800% damage, uh, you know, C ability is only going to be 1040. So that tells you how strong those weapons are. And I know that anybody that got Beatrix Sword probably did considerably well in the last uh, guild battle. So that is everything I have for Zach. Let me know what you guys think, if I missed something or anything else. And until the next video, thanks for watching.